morning, everyone. Welcome to another Live with Blitzy. I'm flying solo today for the intro. Megan is with the two twins today, but we've designed an amazing broadcast for you today because we have so many great Tim Holtz Distress Ink products on sale at Blitzy. So we're gonna show you demos on the Distress Crayons, Distress Ink Pads, Distress Sprays, and Distress Markers. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. You'll learn a ton, and we even have a way that you can earn some free distress sprays today. So Emily's going to be manning the chat and relaying questions. We'll answer them live right here. And she'll also tell you a little bit more about those free sprays that you can get. So hi, Emily, how's it going? Hey, so I'm on the chat with you, like Katie said, answering questions, helping to throw anything over to her and Claudia and Megan as they demo these products. Like she said, we do have um, free Distress spray stains for you today that we're going to be showing you how to use. Those are available on our site and you can get two free stains. You can pick your own colors. Um, you'd add them to your cart and then use the code free distress. And then with a $20 purchase, it will automatically take the price of those off of your cart. So I'll have the link for that in the chat as well as the other products that they are showing you today. So ready to get started? Yeah, we're all set. Now I'm over here with Claudia. You've Morning. been getting inky. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, I am um, going to show you two of the items that we have for sale today. But first, the inks, which is, as Emily and you mentioned. They're just a staple, right? Yeah, Those they're stress staple. Inks. They're really easy to work with. And today, you can get some for free with your purchase. So I'll start with those. Um, I have a couple of examples here. So these distress ink sprays are water reactive. I'm gonna steal one of these bottles. Um, and you can use them with stencils as I did here. And I'll show you in a sec what it looks like, but I used it here with stencils and then you can spray over it. And as you can tell, the colors blend really nicely. Um, and you can also do this cool effect if you spritz it with water, when it dries, it kind of has that like bleached out effect. Uh -huh. So it's really cool. So I'll show you a couple of um, quick sprays here to show you what it looks like. And what are you using here? Is this watercolor paper? So this is watercolor paper. Um, it's got a smooth side and a rough side, but any kind of heavy cardstock is gonna work. Okay. And then I have some of the um, Tim Holtz stencils here. So I'm just gonna place it randomly on there. And you just want to give it a good shake to get all that pigment distributed in the bottle. Now this is the product that we're giving away for free today, yes, right? So this is it. pay close attention, guys, because if you if there's anything you want at Blitzy, twenty dollars or more, you can throw two of these in your cart for free today. You pick the colors that you want, and there's a ton of different colors. Yes, so, so that's many really colors. exciting. You're gonna want the other inks and then throw some sprays in, right? Yeah, because that's what's great. And you'll see, you'll learn today that what's great is that they all work together. So they're all um, water reactive. So mm -hmm. you can mix and match all of these Tim Holtz um, mediums in one project or they work really well together. They pair well. So I have my stencil here and all you do is after you shake the bottle, just give it a little spritz. And I'm gonna use two colors of blue. This is the salty ocean. So you can see how when you lift the stencil, you get this cool Beautiful. effect. I like the mixing of the two blues. Yeah, it's really cool. And you can you can dry this with a heat tool if you want to speed up drying. Um, if if not, you know it'll dry. Okay. Own. Or you can dab it with a paper towel if that's what you want to do. Um, but another technique that I will show you right now with these sprays is if you just randomly spray some colors on here, you can just, so you can see how cool it is on its own. Can you kind of control, so you're going close, you're getting a lot of the bigger splatters. If you go further away, is it going to have kind of a lighter effect? Yes, definitely. So here, I'll use the, the red. Okay. If you go like way up here you'll see how it's a finer mist. It's gonna cover more area, and it's a finer okay. finer mist. So um, I'm just gonna hit this with the heat gun really quick to dry it a little bit so that you can... So you can see that when you layer colors, 
you get, they mix together to give you a new color. Okay, so now I am going to spritz it with some water. And now you'll see that when I dry it, those areas that I sprayed water on are going to take on a different look. So the possibilities really are kind of endless in terms of what you can do and how it's water reactive. So everywhere that I sprayed the water, it gave, gave you like a different tone and the colors mixed together. Yeah. So it's, they're really, Super really fun. Cool. I've been seeing a lot of people doing like galaxy themed backgrounds. Yes, yes. It feels like you can get that effect with this, especially with like adding water to yes. have the bleached out almost effect. You can do the galaxy type of stuff that I'm seeing everywhere right now in the card making and mixed media world. Oh, definitely. And if you want to go in and get more detailed, like you can use a water brush and this is going to act as watercolor. Yeah, you're so, almost like watercoloring with sprays now. Yeah. So it's really, really fun to work with these because all you need is a little water to kind of activate them and then you can use a bunch of different tools. Can you use these on other surfaces as well? Or? It, they work best on a porous surface, so anything that's going to absorb the, the stain is going to work the best. Okay. Just because you don't want it to just roll off of it. Like it's right. not going to stick to a, a, like a plastic or, or anything like that. But on wood, it works on wood, um, any kind of um, absorbent wood, like uh, anything that you get that's kind of like a craft wood. This was new, so they now yes. have the metallics also. So you can actually hear there's a paintball in yes. these ones. So you get the kind of um, paint effect, but this is the brush pewter, and I think there's a few others. This was new to this line um, recently this year. Yeah, you so use I used that. it on the craft, um, and when, you, when it dries, you can see that it has like a really nice sheen to it. Um, I can spray some on this uh, white cardstock, but this this is especially one that you want to give a good shake to distribute all the metallic pigment in there. And it's a really pretty silver, so you can see how once it dries, it's got a really yeah. nice shimmer. I think gold had such a huge moment, but silver's kind of coming back. Oh, definitely, it's yeah. Like, it, it's just a matter of time. And, and so mixed metals are I still love big. mixed metals. Yeah. yeah. So let's check in with Emily real quick, see if there's any questions, who's here live with us. Make sure you guys are interacting. I might have a surprise for you at the end. Yeah, so one of the things that I really love about all of the Tim Holtz colors is that they all have really fun names. Um, I asked what the if anybody had a favorite distress color. Um, we've got some picked raspberries, some mermaid lagoon, some tea dye, like they're all really fun names, like nail polish colors or paint colors that you would find in the hardware store. There were a couple of questions regarding, um, if you were to use it on wood, the distress, the distress stain or any other, the other products, would you, do you need to seal it on wood? Um, is there a specific sealer that you would think to recommend? And then Lori asked, um, I think you're gonna be, I'm not sure how you're demoing the crayons, but she wanted to know if the sprays and the crayons work together at all, like if the crayon would absorb the color of the stain. Are you doing crayons next? I am. You might be able to do and a And I actually test. have, no, I actually have um, a technique. It does, act, the crayons do act like a resist. So you can draw with the crayons and then spray with the sprays and it won't um, adhere to the crayon surface. So okay, it does cool. act, but you'll see, I'll show and you. And the colors work so well together, they're yes. meant to work together. So yes, all correct. the products can kind of cross over each other, yes. right? So and what about the wood? Can you seal it? You can definitely seal it. It's probably recommended uh, depending on, um, I don't know if anyone's ever worked with kind of like that balsa crafting wood. It's very, um, absorbent so sometimes the stains tend to kind of bleed out a little bit so you're gonna have to test it and see what effect you want to work with but um, sealing is probably just recommended just because it's activated by water once it's dry it shouldn't but you never know you yeah. want to like spill something on it and then it ruins your artwork so. exactly so okay so again you can get these 
for free with your order of $20 or more on Blitzy today. You get to pick the two colors you want, so we've left it up to you. Check out the website for more details, blitzy.com on that. But first, you're going to want to see the rest of these demos, because now we're going to do what, right, we're doing the crayons, right? We're doing the crayons. This is, was all the rage at the trade show in January, brand new distressed crayons this year, and people have been loving them. If you haven't picked them up already, Claudia is going to show you, or even if you have, she's going to show you some techniques that you can do using these crayons. So these crayons are wonderful. They come in three um, different sets, and there's six crayons in each set. As you can see here, there's kind of like the classic neutrals, and then there's the brights, and then there's the more like earthy um, yeah. colors. So these uh, sets are great. They work really well together. Once again, they're water reactive, so you're going to be able to use them. Um, I'll show you just a, a few different ways that you can use them, okay. as, as opposed to showing you like an actual one project. Um, so you can use them straight onto a craft mat like this. And, and it's kind of like a lipstick it is it's it's it is kind of like um i can see why they call it a crayon because it is very wax waxy but it it is very concentrated pigment yeah. so and then it this kind of like twists right yeah so, so it it's goes, got a little you can, control. you can control how much you're using so this one is called peacock feathers and what's great is that you can use it straight as and as kind of like a watercolor paint so you can use it oh i think that brush sorry let me clean use this. a dirty brush <laughs> yes i did because i did not bring so while you're cleaning that brush i when i first heard about distress crayons when we were kind of hearing the buzz about it i was thinking along the lines of adult coloring books because that's all the rage too right now yes. these aren't necessarily meant for adult coloring books is that right or can they be used um the, i think that some of the finer details in the coloring books probably wouldn't lend themselves to yeah how wide this is but that's it doesn't what i was mean, thinking but it doesn't mean that you can't paint with them i mean you can definitely Pick some up, pick some like up. you're doing with a smaller brush, and get some of those more intricate. And get some of those more intricate areas. Um, it's just not, uh, it's the the tip of the crayon itself is so wide that it's not conducive yeah. to actually. Yeah, once like, I saw them, I realized, okay, like this is, there is a whole lot more you can do. This is not like an adult coloring book right. specific product. It just happened to be around the time that that, that was It was also a release, all the rage. Yeah. yeah. So you can see that you can make it lighter by adding more water. Um, and use this crayon straight as a watercolor um, effect. Also, um, you can, I have one of these um, wood grain cards because I actually really love the effect of the crayon on an embossed surface. So like, oh, so this is a brand new one that we haven't opened. So you'll see this is what it looks like. It does have that kind of classic crayon uh -huh. tip before you actually start using it. Um, so. I can just kind of write on this card. And this is that, that the wood grain, grain. Wood grain Tim Holtz paper yes. from Ranger, right? Yes. That's really cool. And then you just take a blender and you can really, really get in there and blend it and it's gonna like it's gonna pick up the, the wood grain, but also get um, distributed amongst the cardstock so that you can get like a really cool effect. And there's more than one brown in here so that you can shade. I saw in the yeah. comments a lot of people, or at least one person, <laughs> is getting their watercolor paper soon. They ordered from Blitzy. Now they're going to be like, oh no, I need the wood grain paper. <laughs> yeah, the, the wood grain cardstock is really cool. So I did see, I, I peeked over on the screen, the watercoloring, it was with the lighting in here, it, it's not coming up very vibrant, but if you add more yes. crayon yes, and yes. less water, it'll become a lot more vibrant, oh, definitely. right? And then you can yeah. really paint with it and get better effects. Definitely. So the more of the actual crayon that you add, you can see that it yeah. becomes brighter and brighter. I just had really watered it down, but you can see how great and that And things kind of can get blown out a little in here. Right. <laughs> we have such great natural light. Yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure you guys could see it really gives a vibrant effect, so. It does. Okay, what's up next? Okay, so next is just a technique using a stencil. Um, I'll try to use a bright color so you can see it. So this is once again using one of the Tim Holtz stencils, and you can 
use it straight through the stencil. And then with a blender tool, you can just blend that out. Eva said these demos are dangerous because she wants everything. <laughs> <laughs> it is really cool to actually see what the products do as opposed to just a picture of them. Right. And you, you get a sense. So then when you pick up the stencil, you can see that it's got that really oh, cool texture. Especially if you're like just getting into mixed media. Like that's a really, really easy technique to oh, do with stencils. Oh, super easy. And you can dry this with um, the heat gun if you want to. And it's not going to crack and it's not going to melt. So it's not going to warp like a real crayon would. Um, when you use it with your heat gun. So, for example, now that, I'll show the resist technique. Like now, if you want to, um, like let's say you're doing a little heart and you fill in the heart, um, you can spray it with the Distress Spray stain. And when you dry it, you can see that that's gonna stay there. It's gonna act as a resist. Sometimes I like to dab it with a paper towel too, just to get. So you can see that that none of the work it yeah. together. The spray does not affect. That. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Well, let's check with Emily again, see if there's any questions that we might have missed. I'm kind of peeking on the screen yeah. as you're doing your demos, but it's hard to keep up with everything. So Emily, is there anything happening on chat that we should know about? Um, yeah, there's a question about what is the I think. I know you used the wood grain paper, and I got that in the um, chat for them. There's a link in there. Um, is there a best paper to use? Should you use watercolor paper um, on all of your projects with this, with this, since it does react with water, and there's a lot of techniques with that? Could you use it on a lighter cardstock or on not watercolor paper? Um, as we've always it's, it said, says the same thing, porous paper, or yeah. por porous surfaces on here. So if you're going to be using water with the crayons, I think watercolor paper is your best bet. But really, any porous surface you can use these with. So yes, but definitely watercolor paper is recommended just because it's more durable. So if you're going to be, so you can blend um, this out with your finger, actually. So you can see that, I mean, if you're going to be blending and... Um, combining colors to make your own colors and that kind of thing. It's just nice to have a, a thick watercolor paper, uh, like a ranger. Ranger has a watercolor paper, just because it's more durable, so when you're working with it, it's not gonna rip, it's not gonna warp or buckle or anything like that, so. Very cool. I'm curious too, as we're jumping into the next demo, when we check in with Emily next time for comments, who here are card makers? Who's mixed media? Who's both? What are you using the Distress products for? We just Love to know so we can kind of tailor everything that we're doing around that. But I'm just curious if you're, you know, are you a scrapbooker and you're using these? Or mixed media is kind of all over the place right now. And I think it's a great carryover from paper crafting. And you kind oh, of definitely. like start dabbling into more of the mixed media. And then like the fine arts products start slipping in. So I'm just curious of who's watching what you guys are into. So. Do you have anything yeah. else? Um, no, unless there's any other questions or they want to see anything else. This is kind of the basics to get you started on um, using the Distress Crayons. But once again, they're really great. They work really well with all of the sprays. And you'll see how it works well with the other products that we have for sale today. So Cool. So we're going to set up for Megan the Third's demos now. Let's check in with Emily. Can you remind us again how you get free Distress Spray Stains, Emily? And um, remind all the links that you've put up so we can kind of lose that. Yeah, so again, we do have a promotion today for some free Distress Stray Spray Stains. We showed them first. If you missed that part of the video, make sure that when um, the video is over, you go back and rewatch it because they showed a lot of cool techniques. There's a link for those in the chat and I'll add it again. You, add, you can pick up to two, pick out two colors. There are, um, there's different colors that you can choose from. Add them to your cart, use the code free distress in your cart and with a $20 purchase of something else on the site, then the total will come off your cart and you'll get two of those stains for free. Distress spray stain, it's kind of a mouthful. Um, we do have, people are letting us know, we've got some mixed media artists, we've got some card makers, people really like using them for backgrounds on cards, um, like using them, Lori Ann likes using them, backgrounds for her Julie Nutting dolls. Um, card maker dabbling in mixed media. So a lot of great like paper crafting techniques that we can show you guys today.
Thanks, Emily. So we've hey, been everyone. resetting here. Megan has jumped in, and she has distress markers yes. and the distress ink pads, which are total staple. Like everyone. Yes, I love needs. how all of these are going together, and we're showing you kind of the basics of each one. But yes, they're all super fun to work with all together. What I love too about all of these distress products is that you can get the super grungy look or a masculine look if you want, or mm -hmm. you can do like super bright and simple style. You get so many different effects using the Distress products and it just depends kind of how you choose to do it. I think your style is a little more like clean, bright. Yeah, which these do, I, and then I love like the name, the Distress yeah. inks, because it does give you the Distress look to them, but I love how bright and vibrant they are. I just wanted to show you so the first one I'm going to show you is the Distress Markers, and I just want to show how bright and vibrant these are, and even like the darker colors, like the brown, it's so bright and vibrant. So that's another thing that I love about all of the inks and stuff, is that they're very juicy. So we're going to, are we going to start with the markers? Uh, yes. What so. I love about these markers is they're dual tip markers, so you've got the brush tip on one side, and then you've got your fine tip on the other side. So depending on if you're in more intricate areas or if you want kind of a larger background that you're doing, you can flip between the two sides and they all blend together really well too. So I'll let you do yes. your thing. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is that these are super good to blend with. So they, I'll show you, I'm going to use the brush tip. If you color with one, and then you use another one, and they go together and they blend super well. So you see you get that orange, and they're self-cleaning. So it go, you don't have to worry about when you're blending them, it's self-cleaning. So look how like bright and awesome that orange is. So yeah. they're super good for blending. And they're self- They'll react with water also, right? Yes, all of these will, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, the whole distress mm -hmm. ink line are activated with water, so that makes them really cool. Yeah, so I love that. And then also I wanted to point out too, is when you are blending with these markers, I found this out as I was working with them, if you're doing any hand lettering or anything like that, it gives you like an ombre effect as you're writing. So you get the orange in the beginning, and then as it's like self-cleaning, yeah, so, so it kind of like, like goes from darker orange down yeah, to the yellow. I love that. Awesome. So, and then another technique is you can also do these on stamps. So I have a stamp right here, and all you're going to do is color right over the stamp. So, let's do so direct to stamp from the marker. Are you going to use the yeah. brush end for that then? So you're getting... Yeah. Okay. I'm going to... Yeah. So, and then... So I have... Oh, you can't really see it. So I'm just going to go over... And then the effect you'll get afterwards, um, you it'll look very blended and watercolor-y look. So you don't really have to color in certain surfaces and make it look special or anything. So it'll all blend together, so it'll look really nice. So you don't have to be like exact. super, yeah, super like particular of where you're coloring. You just want to get it all covered. How many colors are you going to be doing? Uh, this one two? I'll do three. three. Okay. So you can see. I think this is something people oftentimes forget about doing is just coloring directly onto your stamp. I think yeah. it's a really fun and easy technique. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. We've got our stamp covered. Okay. And then, so then you're going to. And then the best way to do this to get it fully covered onto your paper is you're going to put it directly on top of the stamp. Can you see that down here? So I put it directly over the stamp. And then you're just going to rub it. Rather than trying to put the stamp down onto yeah. the paper. Because then this, you're pushing on all the sides and everything, so you're going to get even coverage. Okay. And look at that. Voila, look at that Love bird that. <laughs> in a bird cage. 
and there's notes back there that's so pretty. And I love how it, it just looks so blended and so, I, don't, I just love it. And then yeah. there's another way to get a different effect doing the same thing, but if you're gonna add water, so it'll give I you- I was just gonna ask that, yes. like, can we show spritzing yeah. it with water so you get the more watercolory? Mm -hmm. And that'll yeah. be even more blended. Because I think that's my favorite part is they're, they're reactive with water. Mm -hmm. You can do just so many more things with it. You can even watercolor with these. I, I, I didn't yeah, I'm, that's see gonna what you're going to show. Yeah, I thought I, thought I might have read so that. There's so many <laughs> different things you can do with all of these. Okay. Now there I kind of saw the message your madness. You knew there was a bird there, so you went brown. There's mm -hmm. a cage. So just to pop but it. But you don't have to be exact. Yeah, it's see just, how this, like the purple got into the cage, so it kind of, it just flows nicely. So after you re-ink it, you're just gonna spray just, just a little bit over that. And then you're gonna do the same exact thing. So put it over. I also think for a long time that's what a lot of people just assume you need to take the stamp Ooh. and go down onto the paper, but you can you can do it opposite. That. Love that. So now so you've got like a watercolor look. And for the question that people have been asking with the papers, I did test it too. You can, this is actually on regular cardstock, and this is, you can also do it on watercolor paper. So these ones are the regular paper, and then I would, this would for be this watercolor. This one I would recommend probably the watercolor. watercolor You're yeah. going to get a much better watercolory. It still looks yeah. good, but it's just a better effect. Mm -hmm. So this would be. This is on the regular paper with with adding water and then without. And then this one would be adding the water and this one was just putting it right on to the paper. This, I like this, this one, one on the yeah, water. It's with kind no of faded water on a little. It. Yeah, there's yeah. your true distress kind of look. Mm -hmm. So very cool. And Let's then, check in with Emily yeah. first before we jump into the next technique and see if there's any questions on this specific. Thing. Yeah, um, I love this technique. I love putting the marker directly onto the stamp and just scribbling because it, make it, it makes it look really cool and I don't think it's something that most people would normally think to do, but it's an awesome technique and you get a really great look out of it. Someone asked um, if these products were on sale. Yeah, all of the things that we're showing you today are on sale on our site and I'm adding some links in the chat below, so make sure that you catch those or check back after and the links usually float to like the top of the comment section um, but we'll get those back in there for you so that you can have a chance to check these out on our site. And Megan I just saw your mom is in the chat she says hi oh, and I love hello, you. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> and another thing I wanted to add too these are just very few of the colors there's actually 61 different colors that come in the markers. So I just wanted to point that out too. And I think you can buy them individually if you're trying to like build up your collection or you mm -hmm. can buy sets. So yeah. there's a couple of different options. And then one more technique I wanted to show with the markers is yes, you can watercolor with them. So if you have an acrylic block or you have, to have like a craft mat or anything like that, you're gonna go and write right over it. Like that. And then you're gonna add some water to it. Brush. And then you can watercolor with these. So it'll. And this also recommended for watercolor paper. Look at that. Do we have. Okay. Can we, can we show another thing? This yeah. is my, yeah. my go to. We do this yes. with the Tombow markers, but you can also do this with the mm -hmm. distress markers. So I'm going to take. I'm going to do what she did as well. And I'm going to color directly onto here with just a few different colors. And then spray it and then, yeah. yes. That's and another fun way. Actually, I want to go this color. Ooh, yellow. Make a green in there too. I'm gonna do yellow next and then, yeah. So I'm just gonna, and I don't mind, like Megan said, mixing these up. And I'm gonna throw a little turquoise in here. And then I'm gonna take my little spritzer and just spritz this up with water. See how it's already activating so it looks just like watercolor on there? I've never done it with an acrylic block, but I'm pretty sure it works. So just flip it over. Ooh, look at that. And kind of see it. Yes, and then you'll 
heat gun that so then it'll dry. Yeah, so you can make a really quick watercolor background. You can then yes. let that dry and you can um, hand letter over it or you can stamp over it mm -hmm. and you've got a really easy background just with whatever colors you choose to mix. That's my favorite. Yes, like, go so to many, really easy. What do we do? Four different ways now just yeah. with the markers? So, really great collection to have. Yes, yeah, so. All right, Perfect. let's ask Emily real quick if there's any other questions on the markers. Did you, did you have any other techniques um, with this? No, just those. So we're going to move on to the next one if there were okay. any questions. Um, I wanted to point out, too, that Megan mentioned that with the markers, there are 61 colors available. We also have a tin available that's up there that is great for storing the markers. So make sure that you check that out in the sale. It should be in the same sale that the rest of the markers are in. Yes, I, we forgot Almost to mention forgot. that. We have it right here. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, I love this tin because you can fit all your markers in here really easily and close it up. It is recommended that you store these horizontally so that you don't dry the markers up. So this tin is perfect for that. And when it's, we actually usually display it up here on our shelf and you can see right into it that those are your distress markers. So I love this tin. It's it's an actual like tin. It has this clasp for closure and opens right up. So easy to like throw this in your bag if you're going to a crop or you're going away for the weekend. So that's the distress marker storage tin. Don't forget that if you're stocking up. If you've got full set syndrome and need all the markers, you're gonna need somewhere need to put them, right? All right, cool. So now we're gonna move on to the distress ink the pads, inks. Yes, I which love they these. have. The original size, which is just a regular sized ink pad, and then there's also the, the minis. The cute minis, look how cute those are. Perfect for traveling around. Yeah. And the minis actually come in the kits of four. So or you can buy them separate too, so you can stock up on your favorites. More for your book. Okay. So. And they're all first. the The minis and the regular size, are. it's all the same colors across both. It's mm -hmm. just your preference if you want the larger ink pad you want the smaller for kind of maybe some smaller projects that you're yeah. doing or you just don't need or the full you're traveling on the go yeah. because look at these cute tins let's not forget the tins yeah these are also on sale so if you're getting a bunch of these little minis there's a perfect storage tin to keep them all together and you can store 12 into this tin as well while we're while we're talking about it I'll just open it up really quick so you can you've got again that window so it actually matches across the line for your yes, marker storage if you want to be coordinating then that opens up and you've got little slots here that are perfect for holding yeah, your so mini together. Heads. and my little trick too with the blending tool is you can store your blenders right mm -hmm. in here yeah so I actually do that I, I know you're gonna use that tins. so I'll leave it there <laughs> you do that yeah yeah it's awesome so okay. we got everything together so love it all right, so the first technique I'm going to show you that I love the most, maybe not the most, but I just <laughs> love this technique, is that you can use these um, ink pads and make a distressed, weathered look around your project. So I'm going to show you an example around a tag, because we all know Tim Holtz loves his tags. <laughs> so all you do is you ink up the blending tool, and then you're going to go around edges just like that so then it kind of gives it like a vintage look okay. so yeah you turned a plain white tag and now it looks like an old vintage tag and now you can start doing your projects on it. You can start stamping, doing whatever you want. You can so layer I'd... other ink colors mm -hmm. on top. Yeah. I think the blending tool is a no-brainer too. If you have these yeah. inks, you need the blending tool because you're going to want to start doing these, these techniques. These are also on sale, I believe. Yes, yeah, so so we do have the blending tools. Ties. So a circle and a more rectangle. And then Lori, I, I peeked it on the comments, was saying how you can store other things in this tin as well, which is true. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dump these out really quick and show you. So they actually have this little plastic piece in here, which is perfect for separating your ink so they're not sliding around. But if you wanna take that out, you then can store anything that you want in mm -hmm. here. You, you can, can keep all your things in there. Yeah, you can start 
kind of putting all of your little tools in there. So these are really nice to have, and I love that they coordinate with the mm -hmm. distress marker storage tin, so you can be stacking these up, <laughs> yeah. your storage tin, and everything and matches. And they all coordinate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not like obnoxious colors in your mm -hmm. craft room that doesn't match anything. It's very neutral <laughs> yeah. tin, so that's nice, too. Okay. Now I made a mess. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> it makes it look fun. Okay, so what's up next? Okay, so these are also great for blending. So these work great together if you're blending. Where is this? Okay. So I'm going to start with the peacock feathers, which I love this I color. I love the peacock feathers color. Kind of like you said, this technique is your favorite. It's like, this color is my, no, it's not. Yeah, I have another favorite it, color. They're all my favorite <laughs> colors. They're so vibrant, and I love all the names to them, too. So it makes it super fun. So we got that on there, and then we're going to go in with the picked raspberry. And do you need to switch this for every color? Is um, I don't really. I do it personally just so I can do them more together. Control and, yeah. yeah, so if you did go in with the blue with the pink, because they blend good together, it might start blending in here, so you're not going to get your true pink okay. color. vibrant that is. And then you start blending and you get this super pretty purple in the middle. Mm. And it almost turns into like four different colors. There's a darker blue in there now. Yep. I love how those love blend. love that. Yes. So you got the pink and the purple, darker blue, and then the picked, or the, not picked. Peacock feathers. Peacock feathers. feathers. Yes. Thank yep. you. <laughs> So that's showing how they blend. Yes. And then we keep saying they're reactive with water. I'm going to show. That would be the next step. Are you doing the, it? Okay. Yes. I'm like, I, I, I love how you know many it. things there are. You get are. me so excited. <laughs> I know. So you can either do two ways. You can do a, where did I spritz this bottle? Right here. You can either spray it to give it an overall coverage look. Or my favorite is I like to take a paintbrush and just get some water on there. And then you're just going to dab it over it so you get kind of the water droplet look. And then you can already start seeing that the water is pulling the colors. And then like you saw, Claudia, she used the heat gun and started heating it. Or you can, and then you're going to dab it and it pulls it right up. So you get that water droplet wow look at Pretty. how cool that is and then you like you said the galaxy yeah. background's perfect for doing a galaxy absolutely background. i think all of these products work really well for trying to experiment with that mm -hmm. look that's really and there's cool. so many techniques you'll like spend a whole weekend just playing with all of these so these are i mean distressing is nothing new but crafters around the world just love them so it's really one of those things that you build up your collection based on mm -hmm. the colors that you mm -hmm. love you start adding more they keep adding more like the distress crayons are new as of january so who knows what they'll come out with next that kind of goes along the I color know. palette <laughs> and you can mix and match them they all work so well together they mm -hmm. coordinate so that's really cool uh i saw that i think lori b said that she's been collect adding to her collection yeah. for a while now too you keep there's um, so many you just got to get them all <laughs> yeah so let's check with Emily and see if there's any comments, again, that we have missed so we can make sure we're answering them live for you. Yeah, I love um, with the storage, the mini distress storage like they showed, you can add other things in it, not the inks. You can fit other inks if they're that size. You can take out the tray in the bottom and throw your blender tools in there. What I actually really think is cool is that on those mini blender tools, you can take off those blending pads and they fit in the bottom of the distressing. So everything just fits so perfectly for you and it's all nice and compact and ready for you. Um, and this is a thing that I just learned that they're mentioning in the comments. Someone talked about keeping track of all of their colors that they have. It sounds like Tim Holtz actually has an app that can help you do that. So make sure that you check out his app on I'm assuming for iPhone and Android, I'm not sure. We'll definitely check it out later um, as a fun way to keep track of all of our colors. Absolutely. We were kind of 
chit-chatting over here and I'm like we have so much fun stuff yes, here let's show a couple some, more but this is the same technique right yeah so this um other Megan who's not here today she actually yeah. made this so she made the tag and she did the water effect on it and made a cute little tag how cute that is I love it do you and have then, another project you're gonna show us um I have one other technique yes okay cool so the next thing you can do is if you have any um, embossing folder. So this one, I, I made this card using an embossing folder and then I go over with the inks and you can see the raised surface kind of pulls that color in. So you just took the blending tool and did yeah. that? Okay. So this was white and then I put it through the embossing folder and I just go right over it. And, and these will stick out because yeah. of the ink. That's so cool. Yes, I love that. And then, so I'll show you this is an example of if you're doing heat embossing. So I used, I believe this is clear. So if you do clear or you can do any color really and you emboss it and it goes right over it like a resist. So I actually really loved how this stamp looked. So I'm gonna show you an example and it'll be the same phrase right there. So I don't know if you can see it, but I already did the clear embossing over it. I see an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see. The magic will happen. So then I can ink it up. You're using that walnut stain color yes. again. Yes, and look at that. It's like coming through like magic ink. Wow. <laughs> I love that. So if you want to make a card with a sentiment on it, but you want to make a cool background over it, if you emboss first, then go over it with the inks, then you'll be able to see whatever you embossed. See, card making is easy, guys. <laughs> and it's super fun. It's not intimidating. <laughs> it's really easy and fun. You can just break it down into really fun, simple techniques like this and start mm -hmm. building upon the skills of that. I don't know. I always say that all these are my favorite, but there's just so many. It's so fun. That's how you know you're a crafter. You just get excited by it all. Yes. You, can't, you can't resist it. So, you can't resist. Yes, get love it. it. <laughs> All right, um, let's see if there's any more questions with Emily, and then we'll run through just an overview of all the products on sale at Flipsy right now, one last time when we get back from her. Um, one question that I found earlier that I didn't mention, someone asked, how does it do in like humidity and weather? Does that affect it all depending on the climate that you're in? Hmm. That is a good question. I'm not really 100% sure. I don't think it would do anything. I mean, like, if you're in the rain, it's going <laughs> to look like this. But, and, like, with humidity weather, I don't I don't think it should be a problem. I don't really know either. I do yeah. know that in his mixed media line, there is a sealant, a distressed sealant that you can use. If you're worried about that, you can get that and kind of hmm. rub it over. So, but I know, you know, before that, we haven't heard all that much of people... Yeah, but yeah. that's a good question. That's a good question. I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the things that you've seen here are the free distress spray stains that we have on sale today. These come in 1.9 ounce bottles, and all you have to do is add at least $20 of product into your cart on blitzy.com and use the code um, free distress, I believe is what it is, in the checkout, and then you get to use your two, get your two colors for free. What else we have on sale are the Distress Crayons, and again, those come in three sets. There's two of them oh, right there. Three. Oh, it's underneath. Okay. All three sets, those are all on sale today. Ink pads, the mini ink pad kits, the tins, the marker tin, and all the markers. So if you And need, the blending tools, too. And the blending tools. And yes. so much more. So These are much stuff. Just what we were showing in the, the live broadcast today, but there's seriously so much if you just go to Blitzy and check it out. Emily's provided all the links. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are actually going to be here tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. um, to do some Prima planner flowers, yes. is what they're calling it. Whole so new I can't type wait for of that. crafting, so we'll, you're going to want to check that out. Yeah, we'll create a Facebook event on our page so you guys can RSVP to that so you get all the details um, as far as time and a, m a reminder when we go live. So thanks again for joining. Have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.